instability for a little while. And, and they made the formal announcement about two weeks ago that Gable would be back and he was going to wrestle in this match. And I think that, I mean, it's, it's, it's an awesome starting match because Campbell has a, a returning All-American. Tay Gadiali is, is a great wrestler. He was eighth place finisher at last year's NCAA Championships. And this is a, 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 a great match for Gable to have. Now, he did get a chance to wrestle Friday night. Uh, the Gophers traveled up to Fargo, North Dakota, and they wrestled the North Dakota State Bison. So Gable got one match in and is under his belt already. And hey, just Johnny, listen to that, yeah. that reaction. And Gadi Ali is also, he just won the all-star match against a very good Ohio State opponent. And here we go. Absolutely. Gable Steveson, three-time finalist, two-time national champ, and an Olympic champion. I watched Gable a little bit on Friday night, just kind of watching his pace and stuff. And he does a, a you'll watch, he kind of rocks a little bit when he's in his, his stance and he's back and forth, kind of rocking back and forth. And he uses that, I think, to measure distance a little bit with the, his opponent, kind of timing it, get, yeah. getting in his rhythm. It's been a little while, obviously, since we've seen Gable in a, in a Minnesota singlet. It's been a couple years. I, he's, he's, he's put on some size, too. I mean, his legs are stronger. His, he, he looks physical. And from his match on Friday, he still has the quickness. And as the season progresses, it'll, it'll be interesting to see how he can continue with the speed and his strength. As we said, Gadi Ali was an All-American last year in NCAA Championships. He is a uh, four-time NCAA qualifier. They did wrestle in the 2021 NCAA Championships. Actually, they wrestled first round. There's a stall warning against Gadi Ali for leaving the cylinder. They wrestled in the first round in the 21 NCAA Championships. Gable won by fall in a minute 27 in that match. But Gadi Ali's done a good job just every year getting getting better every year, kind of climbing that ladder. Just beautiful throw by single for Gable. Another thing that you and I talked about after Gable made the announcement that he was going to come back is that this is the first time we'll see Gable wrestle in a three-point takedown era. And neutral is certainly, his, I, I think, his strongest yeah. position. He is very good on his feet. And I think the three-point takedowns really favor him well. Exactly. That'll be, I mean, he's going to rack up a lot of points. Mm -hmm. He did so on Friday night en route to a technical fall in just under two minutes. So 50 seconds left in the first period. Gable Steveson is up three to one. Gadi Ali has been warned for stalling. Gable's kind of having a little trouble with his headgear. Yeah. He's, he's had to adjust it a couple times so far. Might have to get him, get that thing fixed back on right. Didn't need it when he was wrestling no. freestyle. Oh, or the gonna, WWE. He's going to have a long talk with your equipment yeah. manager. Really good snap. Run corner there by Gable. Take down with eight seconds to go in the period. A, a wonderful time to score. And three point takedowns. Two takedowns, he's up six to one. Gable has 26 seconds of riding time. He'll have choice. Gonna go neutral. <laughs> we got a chance to talk to the coaches a little bit in the last couple days as well and it sounds like Gable has been even though you know they made the announcement that he was coming back uh, you know about two weeks ago now but he had been in the room prior to that he'd been in the in the room training with those guys I think he's still building his conditioning up I don't think you know obviously very few wrestlers in the country are where they plan to be in you know condition wise by March right now yeah. but Gable still you know he's ramping 
ramping his training up a lot in the last couple weeks. It's a little bit different than training camp for the Buffalo Bills. Yes. Gable just kind of trying to, he's having trouble getting into his ties. Gadiali's doing a good job of keeping some space. Gable back to that little throw by attempt that he scored that first takedown with. This, this, there's where he's very, very good. I don't know. Once, uh, Gadiali's kind of been very, you know, he's picking his yeah. attacks so far in this match, and he, he committed to one there. And, and when you go after Gable, a lot of times it doesn't it doesn't end well. No. He's Gable's reattacks to the left side. As good as anybody in the world. Yeah, especially for a heavyweight. So there's stall warning against Gadiali, and that's going to be a team or a, a point for Gable. It's something we don't see all the time is. Gable working on riding time. Yeah. He's close to the minute mark. And now he has a minute of riding time. 10 seconds left in the second period. Steveson up 10 to 1. Gable's trying to get the fans pumped up. Yeah. Why not? Yep. Look at that, just a, a phenomenal re-attack by Gable there. He's going to cut him. He's letting everybody know he's just <laughs> going optional start. Absolutely. Escape point for Gadiali, 10 to 2. Gable's going to try to open this up a little bit more now, I think. I would guess we'll see him work, try and work towards that tech fall. For those of you at home wondering why we're starting at heavyweight, Campbell did win the coin toss, and they elected to start at heavyweight. It was their choice. I don't think that was what Gable wanted. He was hoping to be the last match of the duel. Yep. Good snap down run corner there. Very few people move laterally as well as Gable does. He's, he's good at just finding those angles with which to attack from. Gadiali back up on his feet. Gable in a misdirection, high crotch. Can't finish there, but the attack was pretty smooth. Good defense by Gadiali. 13 to three right now. Gable has 124 a riding time. Go, 45 seconds left in the third period. Gable in on a blast. No stall warning there. There's a shot attempt by Gadiali and, and drive through finish by Gable with 30 seconds to go. He needs one more takedown for a tech fall. You can see the coaching staff's right there by him. They're letting him know what he has to do to get a tech. There's a stall warning against Gadiali. So another point. Now a ride out and a ride out gets the tech. Gadiali gets an escape. Gable's gonna need it on there. Ten a seconds of left. Ten seconds. He needs a takedown for a tech fall. You see, he's kind of, he's breathing. Yeah, I mean, he's breathing pretty hard right now. He's been working this whole match. Just a low single attack and a takedown, and the crowd wow. goes absolutely crazy. It's about as loud as I can remember it being in this arena. Obviously, this is great for Minnesota wrestling. It's great for Big Ten wrestling. It is great for the sport in general. To have it is wonderful icon, to have him back. An icon coming back in wrestling. Twenty to four technical fall for Gable Stevenson. Gives the Gophers five team points. They lead in the duel five to zero after one match. Just see those those attacks. I mean, yeah. outside of the one misdirection high C, he was able to finish on every one of his attacks in that match. Every time he com fully committed to a shot, he scored. And every great defense right. by Gadi Gadiali because that misdirection high crotch, that he, how do you stop that? Right. And now we have number 26 ranked Anthony Moulton versus 
Cooper Flynn, number four, ranked 14th in the country. I was like, it's always funny to me when we start, when you know, we, you don't start the traditional 125 pounds and you flip from the big guys down to the 125 yeah. pounders. And usually, you know, now these guys are a lot faster than what we just watched, but that's not the case, maybe. No, we're <laughs> Rabel's on the mat. Anthony Moulton, a graduate student out of Crest Hill, Illinois. He was selected as an alternate for the NCAA championships last year, but was unable to compete. He's going to get an opening takedown. Yeah. Great job by Anthony Moulton there to get the first takedown of this match. Gets a takedown and right away attacks the wrist. Yep. Flynn to his feet, trying to fight hands, and he's up and out. And this is Flynn's first home duel because he had a forfeit against yeah. Bucknell. Two years ago, uh, Anthony Moulton had a win over Matt Ramos during the season. Ramos Is went on. Is that the same year he won, that Matt Ramos won NCAAs? Well, he never won NCAAs. He got to the finals. That's right. He beat Spencer Lee, but did not win. Got second. Moulton was a state champ out of Illinois in high school. Cooper Flynn from Seymour, Tennessee. I wonder how he's adjusting to the uh, the start of the winter season here. It's a bit cities. different in Minneapolis than it is in Seymour, Tennessee. I just got a, a little nugget from a friend of the program, Jason Bryant. He said that uh, Anthony Moulton is one of four wrestlers still competing in Division I that was originally with Old Dominion back when they dropped their program. Okay. Love it that he finds a way to still wrestle and be a part of a program. I can't imagine how that would feel, being a part of a program, and then it drops. And I think that's great segue into a little bit of what's going on right now with, with Campbell. We had a chance, I talked to Scotty Sentez, head coach Scotty Sentez a little bit before the duel, just about kind of what's going on with, with Campbell. Obviously the news back early in October with some of their scholarships being reduced a little bit. And, and Scotty wanted to make sure to first and foremost let us know that right. the Campbell wrestling's not going anywhere, that they are not, uh, not worried about the program being dropped or, or cut in any way. They just had to, you know, with kind of in this new world right now of college sports, we're, have to, we're having to find funding other ways. So they're doing a good job. And, and they like, he's been very, very active in the fundraising. And they're doing a great job of, of reestablishing some of those funds. And they were, the athletic department gave them a heads up yep. on what could happen or what was the foreseen future. Absolutely. And, it, it, and I, I really like, obviously it's, it's important that we keep as many Division I schools as we can. We need opportunities for, for athletes to compete. Another escape for Flynn. Trails in the match three to two. Moulton has 19 seconds of riding time. And Flynn is a red shirt junior, four and one on the season, two and oh in duels. Career record of 33 and 13. Last year, did he make it to the blood round last year? I believe he did. Yes, lost in the blood round last year. Fifty seconds left in the second.
Cooper Flynn's tie-ups are getting a little bit more physical here. Trying to open up Moulton to get to a leg attack, and Moulton doing a very good job staying in position. Yeah, it, you know, it seems like Moulton really likes, he likes to wrestle from space. He's, yeah. That first attack he had, he's fast. I mean, he's got the ability to close that gap, get to the legs from space. And you're seeing a lot of times in wrestling, you see that contrast in styles. Cooper's trying to close that gap, get in, get into his ties, get to his offense. And it's hard. I'm assuming that Moulton is also left-handed. Mm -hmm. He's big left leg lead. Yeah. Very staggered and, and stance. And that can be very hard to score on as well and get that feel. We will start neutral in the third. Flynn on that re-attack, he's got the ankle. We're going shin wizard from Moulton. And Cooper's able to run that leg down, finish the takedown near the edge of the mat. And then a, a great job of circling back towards the center, yes. not letting Moulton find that out of bounds. And as soon as Moulton's elbow hit the, hit the mat, Cooper attacks the rest. Yes. Moulton chose neutral in the period. I, it'd be interesting to see how this, if he doesn't feel comfortable on bottom, usually, you know, more often than not, choice is bottom from wrestlers. So if he's choosing neutral, maybe bottom's not his strongest position. But he's up to his feet and doing a really good job of fighting yes. hands there. He's kept, kept Cooper Flynn's wrist. right hand controlled, and he's up and out. Escape from Moulton now makes it 5-4 match. Cooper Flynn leads. Moulton fires off two attacks right there. Flynn doing a good job staying in the middle of Matt. Solid defense and then circles right back in front. 50 seconds to go. Moulton doing a good job yeah, controlling the elbow, and Flynn just short. can't get that arm out. Yeah. He goes pretty, he's going pretty long on his, el like, yeah. on his lock. Moulton up, back up, 25 seconds to go. Moulton needs a takedown. Neither wrestler has been worn for stalling yet, and as I say that, we've got stalling against Cooper Flynn. Moulton firing off attack after attack. 10 seconds to go. Flynn going to put that Tennessee squeeze on him down here and just. Wow. Flynn Great holds match. on for that 5-4 win and a phenomenal match. In his home debut for the Gophers, again, he did have, we, we wrestled a week ago. He had a forfeit in that match against Bucknell. The fans sure love him. We'll see right here as he's getting up to his feet, fighting hands. Welcome back to the University of Minnesota campus inside the Maturi Sports Pavilion. We're two matches in to a 10-match duel. We'll get a little bit of highlights here from that first or that second match with Cooper Flynn getting a five to four win. See, just a good job here controlling wrists, keeping space. A lot of, a lot of attacks from Anthony Moulton, but he just was never yeah. able in that third period to get to a get to a leg, close that distance. Moving on now to 133 pounds for Campbell, Dominic Zaccone, ranked number 22 in the country out of Orland Park, Illinois. We'll be taking on a sophomore from Princeton, Minnesota, eighth ranked Tyler Wells. And if anybody has better reattacks than Gable, maybe Tyler Wells? Yeah. So after two matches, the Gophers are up eight to zero against the Campbell Fighting Camels. The one hump camels. We did note that earlier. That it's interesting that the Campbell University elected to go with a one hump camel instead of a two humped camel. Wells, as you said, very, very, very good with his reattacks. A lot of times you'll see him 
you know, he, he takes control of the mat, put everything's usually pressure forward, forward, trying to almost force that his opponent into a shot where he can hit it to get to his reattacks. Tyler Wells doing a good job staying in his stance. Zaccone tries to tie up a two on one and Wells fights right out of it. Zaccone's a three time NCAA qualifier and was a uh, three time state place winner in Illinois in high school. Both 125 and 133 from Campbell out of Illinois yep. High School. And we saw them before the duel doing a lot of partner stretching, warming up. Solid chemistry be between those two guys. I bet they knew each other from high school and Moulton being a transfer from Old Dominion. Yep. I'm assuming that they had a friendship and then like an easy decision to go join the uh, Fighting Camels. Yep. As a former 133-pounder myself, it's always good to have that chemistry with the 25-pounder. You know, you kind of, you got to stick up for yourself. The rest of the team always bullies you around a bit. <laughs> so usually you travel in packs of two, it works well for you. I was fortunate to have Jason Ness as my buddy. Nobody messed with us. It's not a bad practice partner. No. Until they blow out your ACL. That did happen. Not intentionally. I want that on the record. At least I don't think it was. Wells has a long shot from a two on one. Twenty seconds left in the first period, and we are sitting at goose eggs. Zaccone also a big left leg lead. Yeah. You know, it takes it takes a while to get used to that. I it feels awkward to me yeah. even just standing with a left leg lead. Tyler will have choice to start the second. He's going to start in the bottom position. Any of you lefties out there listening to it? You're lucky. Yeah. Zaccone brings him back in a, a little bit of a cl little, claw. Yeah. And as soon as Tyler went to, as soon as Wells went to fight the, the claw, yeah. Zaccone re-grabbed and took control of the two-on-one. Wells doing a good job changing positions, getting to a, a short sit, and he's up to his feet. First point on the board, this 133-pound match. Goes to Tyler Wells, 1-0 lead. Nice level change attempt by Zaccone. Wells trying to get light on his feet, bouncing around. You see, too, another, th another thing that Tyler does very well is he keeps his hands back. He doesn't get extended very often. You see, kind of Zaccone's the opposite. He's using that, that reach yeah. with his hands to kind of, again, like we talked about measuring distance. There's a... I think both wrestlers maybe just got worn for stalling. Yeah. Or I, that was just Zaccone. Wells in on a cross single, knee pull. Zaccone doing a good job with the shin whizzer. Short time here in this period. Wells trying to finish this shot. Zaccone's fighting it off. Two, okay. Take down, One. three point takedown with two seconds right left the in the end of the period. Such a good job of dropping down to the ankle.
attacking on the other side. Yeah, you, you see it here too. It just right there. Then keeps he that head that inside that side. knee. Yep, runs that far angle. Zacone starts down in the third period, up to his feet almost immediately. Tyler's not. Uh, doesn't ride all that often. Again, it's kind of he he likes to be in the neutral position. Feels very comfortable in neutral. Zacone's out for one point. A four to one lead for Tyler Wells. 18 seconds of riding time in favor of Dominic Zacconi. Wells did a good job with that inside tie, getting his head right to the inside so he can also have a solid down block. Now back in on the leg again. Shelf, attack Flex far that leg. Far, uh, yeah. Seven to one lead now for Tyler Wells. Coaching staff is letting him know he needs one more takedown for the major. Keeps his hand up, hands on Zaccone, then a quick little elbow pass. Now we're seeing a little bit more motion too, even yeah. kind of more footwork out of Tyler Wells. 45 seconds left in the third period. Tyler would need a takedown and a ride out for that major decision. There's a Zaccone good attempt by Dominic Zaccone. He's in on a leg. Ooh. Tyler trying to sit corner. <laughs> 20 seconds to go now. He's got that ankle hooked. He just needs to yep, drives up into him. Takedown now needs the ride out. 13 seconds to go. Short time, and that looks like Tyler Wells will hang on for that major decision. He's going to get the ride out in a 10 to 2 win. Really good job of building that match as it went on. He started to show more energy, more pep in his step, more movement. Was able to use that for a couple takedowns in the third to get that major decision. 10 to 2 win for Tyler Wells. Gives the Gophers four more team points. They lead in the duel now 12 to 0 after three matches. Moving on to 41, we have returning All American Vince or Vance Bombar versus Shanna Hanna. Shannon Hanna, number, ranked 30th in the country out of Lakeland, Florida. Is a two time NCAA qualifier for Campbell. Qualified in 2022 and 2023, and then redshirted last year, and represented the Bahamas in the Olympic Games qualifier down at the Pan Ams, and wrestled uh, in the U23 Pan Am Championships. Right off the whistle, he was third place finisher in U23s for the Bahamas. The Bahamas is probably weather-wise a bit different right now than Minneapolis, Minnesota. Fortunately, we are inside for Shannon. As you said, Von Bauer was an All-American a year ago down in Kansas City, the NCAA Championships. So far, both guys are being very active and has some shot attempts by both of them. Dan, you're not going to believe this, but Shannon Hanna is also from Old Dominion back when they dropped their program. Not far to travel. No. I'm glad that Jason's still listening. We didn't scare him off after yeah. <laughs> some of our early antics. Mob are able to fight that. He's a slippery attack. guy. And in on a shot of his own. <laughs> trying to stay on the edge. Hannah's trying to work towards the 
outside that cylinder. Bombar trying to pull him back to the center and finish this leg attack. Plenty of time still left. Yeah. Bombard, he, Hannah's doing a great job yeah. of fending this off, but I will say, Bombard needs to just kind of calm down a little yeah. bit, bring it to the middle of the mat. Bouncing on one leg for that long is not easy either. No. So Bombard bars uh, mat awareness. He's going to watch that film, and we talked about it last week. Bombard's IQ on that one. It, it's, it's. Just, He's a very chaotic wrestler. It's not exactly controlled chaos. It's, he's just all over the place. Always trying to attack. High volume of leg attacks. Back in again on the leg. Trying to stay low and finish this time instead of coming up to his feet. Short time here, trying to finish at the end of this period. He's pop his head out. Shannon's doing a good job being very Tight. Now we're getting neutral danger call, but only two counts. <laughs> Nothing yet. There the ankles hooked with right one second to go. Wow. Did a great job of hooking that right ankle, or hooking with that right ankle to get that takedown right at the end of the period. Good thing for Von Bar with his chaotic style of wrestling. Right. He is in great shape. Shannon Hanna starts down the second period. Go, Heavy claw and Vombard trying to scoot Hanna's leg back to break yeah. it down. And Shane and Hannah's doing a good job just keeping that position. He's looking for yep, that quick explosive stand up and now they're back out of bounds. Riding time up to 35 seconds. Vombar and Salazar from the same high school. Mm -hmm. Both returning All-Americans. There's probably not a lot of high schools in the country that can say they, you know, from year to year that have two All-Americans in the same NCAA championships. I'd have to agree. Clubs, yes. High schools, no. Great job by Von Bar getting that near wrist. And it gets to his feet. He's up and out for the point the escape. Rombauer able to get riding time up to 115. We have another left leg lead. You get something they do down there. Be interesting to know what the percentage. Only recruit left handed yeah. wrestlers. I like it. The Gopher coaching staff is three yeah. of the coaches were lefties. Yeah. Eggum, Sanders, and Becker are all lefties. Von Bauer back to the center, ready to go. What you see a lot of times in Vance's matches is that as it goes on, again, kind of the way with, we saw in the last match with Tyler Wells, that his action, his, his attack rate picks up as the match wears on. He's in it's almost like shape. Eggum should have a, a mat in the back and have them just go ahead and wrestle the first two periods. Ooh, I like that. Wrestle two periods in the back, then come out. Yeah. I wonder what periods four and five, like the how much their attack rate would increase then. Put some people in the Kenny Logans at Danger Zone, Mac. Go, 
So Shanahan had do very good hand fights, but his, his feet aren't moving. Nope. And if he can work on heavy hands, but also moving your feet at the same time, it's gonna be, it's gonna open up your offense. A lot more well. effective. Again, Von Bauer in on a leg, trying to finish near the edge, needs to just pull him all the way to the center. You see this a lot, just, just pull this, pull your opponent you to the time. center. You have time, there's a minute. Good finish there. Able to finish right on the edge. Another takedown for Vance Von Bauer. Seven to one lead, riding time over a minute. And go out of bounds. I think what you'll see is, I would assume Gopher staff will have, yep, back Luke's letting Von Bauer know we want to go optional start, cut him, get another takedown, try and work for bonus points. And that's exactly what Von Bauer will do. He cuts 50 seconds Shanahan left. Shanahan loose. Trying to get one more takedown for a major decision. Back in a leg with stall warning against Campbell's Shannon Hanna. And now a really wow. good timed attack there. Very nice. Shannon Hanna, he's trying to finish on the edge, but we're gonna go out of bounds. He timed that shot very yes. well. And that's the first time we've kind of seen him really commit to one. If that happens in the center of the mat, there's a good chance he finishes that. Nineteen seconds left. Bob 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 back in on the leg, trying to finish this takedown for a major decision. He's got both legs. He's got a takedown. Wow. Five seconds to go. He's going to get the ride out. Very Add an nice additional single. point for riding time. Makes it an 11 to two major decision for Vance Von Bauer. And four more team points for the Gophers. A 16 to zero lead after four matches. Vance Von Bauer is your winner here at 141 pounds. Used three great leg attacks for takedowns. Nice return here by Flynn. Wells, Wells, very yep. excited for that win. Absolutely. Proud. We're four matches in. The Gophers lead 16 to zero. We've got six matches to go. Stay with us. We'll be back shortly. Welcome back to the Maturi Sports Pavilion. We're four matches into this duel between the Golden Gophers and the Fighting Campbells. Fighting Camels out of Campbell. <laughs> Campbell is led by head coach Scotty Sentez, who is a two-time All-American at Central Michigan. And he's a four, fourth year coaching now at Campbell University. At 149 pounds for Campbell is Oliver Fairchild out of Easton, PA. And for the Gophers, ranked 22 in the country, Drew Roberts. Drew's out of Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Is a beautiful city. Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Dan, I gotta ask, is that the, the, I guess the largest knee pad you've ever seen? No. No, no. okay. Back that, where I'm from, people would double up the volleyballs. Oh my gosh. Yeah. They get real big. So much protection on the knee. Yeah. A lot of bounce. I, I mean, if, if Drew hits a penetration step, judging by like the bounce of that knee pad, there's just no way he can stay down. Like he has to come up. Maybe that's part of the goal. Nice overtie snap by Roberts. Fairchild in on his shot, but pretty long here and. Fairchild doing a good job of controlling the elbow so Roberts can't spin behind. Woo! Some trickery by Fairchild here. Another shot attempt, good defense by Roberts, and a reattack attempt. Trying to run that corner, get that angle. Fairchild did a good job of staying square to him. Fairchild, very tall for 149 pounds. And we would be if, remiss not to talk about 
the coach from Campbell, who competed at 149 pounds. Roberts gets a takedown near the edge of the mat. The coach from Campbell, who competed at 149 pounds when he was in college, and Purdue is wearing, guy. Purdue guy, wearing one of the most fantastic suits I have ever seen. We are talking about Jake Pataxel. Viewers at home, if you get a chance, just keep an eye on the corner of your screen when that camera goes to the Campbell bench. If you see a five-piece orange suit, you saw a five-piece orange suit. You're not seeing things. It is incredible. I can't take my eyes off of it. Do you think you got it from Men's Warehouse? You're going to love the way you look. Robert's doing a good job on top. Keeping a lot of pressure on the hands with that half and spiral ride. Fairchild trying a little bit of funk of his own. Usually those tall, lanky guys always got some kind of, they got some tricks up their sleeves. They got long sleeves. They got plenty of space to store those tricks. I think he was wearing a hat that said make, make wrestling fun again, and so that's why he's trying all those tricks. Gotcha. Roberts will finish this first period on top, get the ride out. Push riding time a little bit up over a minute. Great first period for Drew. He leads 3-0, has choice. his choice, he chooses down to start the second. See, just great job of you know, that right hand club that just kind of knocked Oliver Fairchild off his balance. You think we're going to see legs come in? We are not. No, no Drew legs are coming in. No legs today. Drew up to yeah, his he feet, gets that escape quickly. And on a good shot, head, head was just down a little bit, so it's hard for him to come close to a finish. Just uses yeah. that underhook. That, that was an and, easy stall call. Right yeah, there. Oliver tried to circle back in, but Drew just kept cutting him off the whole way around. Drew Robbs has been a part of the Gopher family for a long time as well. His father um, was an assistant coach for the Gophers during our our time with them and. Great guy. One of the ugliest guys I've ever seen, but super, super, super nice. nice. Very yeah. nice. Good takedown by Drew. Good job. Kind of just easy head block, run that corner, finish that takedown. Roberts cuts Fairchild loose. 25 seconds left in the second. Roberts has a minute nine of riding time. And that's what, the, that's what the Gopher staff wants to see. Even if there's a takedown's not involved, right. it's putting multiple things together. Fairchild again just, just bull runs rushed right him. In. Yeah. Short time. He's trying to finish this. And three point takedowns can change a match. Drew does a good job yeah. utilizing the splits to fend that shot off. I thought Fairchild was just going to take a nap on that big pillow. Just very, very good job. Head block, run corner. And That's a good position in front of does. him. Yes, very. Just easy to to finish that takedown if you that first step is to the side. Roberts again, a lot of pressure on Fairchild's hand. We're not seeing it today, but uh, last night w you and I watched that Iowa Iowa State duel on BTN Plus, and the officials, and actually we have Kurt Frost as the assistant official today, but he was the head official in that 
duel last night, and he, they had headsets nice. on. Great job by Drew Roberts, just using his hands, finding those ankles. The officials had headsets on, and we were wondering what they were, and, and they don't have them today, unfortunately. But I asked Kurt Frost before the duel what they, what he had on, and he said it's a, something they're trying this year, and it's allows, it's a closed loop system, and it's just the F head official and the assistant official on it, and it allows them to converse a little easier as the match is going. They can, uh, a second official can say, hey, I'm Robert's looking thinking, for swipes. Fairchild does a good job getting to his belly. Potentially, that's potentially dangerous. That is potentially dangerous. That leg pretzel can can get guys in trouble with their knees real quickly. But it, it again, it kind of allows the officials to communicate. This, they can this second official can say, "Hey, I'm, I'm you're thinking maybe stalling one guy, or that's potentially dangerous on this side. I can see it." So I I really like that the NCAA is doing that, and hopefully it it catches on. Yeah. Especially at a tournament when it's so loud and a lot of different. Uh, Matt's going on. Yes. Could... We just got to find a way to get get one of those, get into that closed loop, get a headset of our own. Roberts working on a wing. We'll get that one stopped. Potentially Roberts is well. doing a very good job off the whistle. First move. Fairchild up and out. 40 seconds to go in this third period. Drew does have riding time locked up, so it is an eight point lead right now for him. But he still he wants to get another takedown. I'm gonna say continuous on that. Action on the edge. 22 seconds to go. Drew leads 10 to 3 on the scoreboard. Riding time point will be coming. Get it. Great job getting to an angle there. Fairchild controlling the elbow. And that's the way this one will end with a bonus points 11 to three win. Major decision for Drew Roberts. Four more team points for the Gophers. They lead now after five matches, 20 to zero. They've got bonus point wins in four of the first five matches. Pavilion. We're halfway through today's duel between the Golden Gophers and the Campbell Camels. Obviously, it was the big return of Gable Stevenson that got everybody up and excited early on. But the Gophers have used four bonus point wins through the first five matches to take a 20 to zero lead in this duel as we're halfway through it. Just, they've a lot of takedowns up and down the lineup. Everybody's been able to find ways to get to legs, get to finishes. Agreed. And Great to have Gable Stevenson back in the Gopher lineup and get just, just back a part of college athletics. I've been watching him kind of a little bit as this duel's gone on. He wrestled the first match of the duel. Again, Campbell opted that they won the toss. They opted to start there. But I've been watching him on the side, and he's he is coaching every guy up and down the lineup so far. As soon as he got done with this match, he got dressed, came out, sat front on the bench, and has been offering advice to everybody. And we're back at 157. 157 pounds. For Campbell, it will be Seth Larson out of Flowery Branch, Georgia, a freshman. And for the Golden Gophers, ranked number seven in the country from Pine, Bu Pine Bush, New York, Tommy Askey. Askey, a transfer from Appalachian State. Seth Larson was a four-time state in high school out of Georgia. Hey, it's always good to see those southern schools with wrestling programs and then individuals that continue their career after high school. Tommy's undefeated on the season so far. Seth Larson, one and three. 
Askey ranked number seven in the country. Both guys just kind of feeling each other out here early in this match. No real committed attempts out of either guy so far. Hand fighting starting to pick up. Minute 40 left in the first period. Dan, I don't know if you noticed this, but we got another left leg lead there for a little bit out of Seth Larson. Now he switches to a right. Ties with the left leg league, attacks right. There's a little bit better of an attempt from Tommy Askey. Got That's to a, a leg. Job getting out, though. Yep. Once you get extended, not trying to stay down there in that position where you're stretched out, just getting out of it, get back to a Offense from your feet, and again, he's in on a shot and up and out of there. Good defense so far from Seth Larson. One thing so far that we've seen out of the Gophers today is they're doing a very good job of finishing periods. They've, throughout the first five matches, they were able to get takedowns or, or escapes like right at the end of each period, which is a great time to score. See if Tommy's able to and fight for bonus points. Find that same success. And he's in on a shot, and he's got a takedown with 13 to go. Wow. Very, very good job with that pop high C. Ashkey trying to keep him flat and not let him work out and sneak an escape in at the end. He's doing a, a little bit there at the end of the period at, when he was riding, he was using his head. I like to see that out of a guy on top. Again, there's that just kind of that little pop misdirection shot. And he just runs through it. It's alumni day today, and I saw Jason Ness out there at, at intermission. I'm sure he loves to see how, with the way yeah. Tommy Askey's riding there, using his head to drive down. Jason was very good at that. Larson gets the escape. Three to one lead now for Askey. So Askey, heavy right laid lead, but all of his attacks are to the left side of his opponent's body. Yeah. Except for that one. Another good He's like, you think I can only him? attack one way? He's listening. Yeah, he's listening. Again, though, that was another, that same pop into that shot. That time it was a double. Forty-five seconds left in the Second, Askey trying to keep him flat right on the edge of the mat, work on riding time. Again, too, he's doing a good job. Like, dr he's driving with his toes in the mat, putting so much pressure forward. Trying to keep weight on the hands. What you see, too, a lot of times with freshmen is this is the position that they struggle the most in when they make that jump into college is the bottom position. Usually in high school, especially Seth Larson being a four-time state champ, had a lot of success in high school, probably was able to get away yeah. very easily. Didn't have to work very hard to get escapes. The college it's atmosphere a, is a, a bit different. Quite a bit different, and especially a fifth-year senior one and in the Big, Big Ten. Ten. <laughs> yes. Again, there's just that pop into that double. Great job getting both legs. Secured, finishing that takedown. Yeah. 
Askey up and out for the escape, a seven to one lead now. There's a first committed attempt from Seth Larson. And let's see if Askey can get back to his, his high crotch. I'd like to see the left side, just like Mike Thorne. Nice left, left side high crotch. Good hand fighting in here. That time, Seth did a lot better job of keeping hands down, got a hand in between to defend that shot. Started to feel that same pop As he put a few a times. Pressured throw by attempt. Stall warning against Seth Larson there. Another leg attack. He's got both legs trying to drive through it. Larson attacking that near leg, and Askey works to get his... Tried the leg pass, but yeah, Askey's able to finish that. Just stayed with it, yep. kept climbing Transitions. up. Tommy now leads 10-1 to 1 on the scoreboard. Riding time is up over. Almost secured. Got it. Riding time secured. Askey's went for an elevator attempt a few times. Trying to sneak his right leg inside of Askey's legs. The elevator's an underutilized move. I, I like doing it whenever I'm wrestling. Kids we coach. Just such a, a wily veteran trick. Yes. Askey trying to get some Let's near get fall some points. Swipes. Yeah, he's got a couple here. Holding two at the end of the period, two points for near fall, add the riding time point. Another major decision. A 13 to one major decision for Tommy Askey. Add four team points to the Gophers, now 24 to zero. They lead after six matches. Everything's really, really good finishes here from Tommy. Just yep. getting to legs, finishing right away. You can see Seth Larson trying to leg pass in a couple of those situations, and against a wrestler like that, you need to make sure you're Ask just finishing quickly. hard to beat. He stays in very good position and has solid transitions from takedowns to going right to wrist rides or keeping somebody down. Moving on now to 165 pounds for Campbell. It will be Ryan Bolatino out of Haddonville, New Jersey. For the Gophers, ranked number 10 in the country out of Costa Mesa, California, Andrew Sparks. One of their original high pace boys. And, and just like that on a takedown, side. four seconds into the match. And we have an injury on the shoulder of Ryan Bolatino. He went, he didn't really defend that go behind super hard. It looked like something happened to that shoulder right away. Almost like a stinger. You can see here. Oh, no, I think that elbow, this elbow hit the mat, and then I think that messed with the shoulder. Fired right up. Andrew Sparks um, started wrestling his sophomore year in high school in California, and then one state his senior year in high school. California only has one class wrestling. And they got and, a lot of people. And very good wrestling. So to start as a sophomore and win it is kind of unheard of. Sparks will have his choice now after the injury time. He chooses bottom to start. Trying to get his hips away. Bolotino feels like he's trying to slip that leg yeah. in. He's going to that crab ride early. Sparks up to his Good feet. Good job and he's attacking out. Yeah. hands. Good hand fight. Now a four to zero lead for Andrew Sparks. Slide by attempt by Bolatino. And again, Sparks such a good job catching that angle. Another takedown makes it seven to zero lead for Andrew Sparks. Right into a tilt. He's a high pace boy. 
No breaks, all gas, right, Mac? Right. Absolutely. Four points near fall, 11 to zero lead now, and Sparks are gonna cut, Bolatino lose. Stallion on red, I, there's, you know, shaking yeah, he, out that arm. I'm, that shoulder's still from bothering him, it looks like. I think what happened is his elbow hit the mat, and I bet his shoulder popped out a little bit, had some separation. Hopefully he didn't hit his funny bone. Oof. Yeah, not funny about that. One ten left in the first. Sparks is up eleven to one over Bolatino. Sparks gets another takedown. 14 to one. And is working for a first period tech fall. Yeah, it, it gives the escape. One more takedown would get him that tech fall. And Bolatino goes big. Oh, hips. Lad drop, he's got us. We're holding four near fall and Bolatino's got Andrew Sparks takedown. in trouble. Sparks needs to get his arm through. That's not a, that. Oh boy. Sparks trying to fight this off. Hands that was aren't locked anymore. Sparks gonna get out of danger, but that's a seven point move. Bring Ryan Bolatino back in this match. Yeah. You do not see lat drops very often. That was awesome. I love it. Sparks gets a reversal now. It's 16 to nine. What a first period. Yeah. These guys just a lot of take downs. put up 25 points Some in the first period. Some airtime, baby. You're going to see this lat drop right there. Just he's got he had Andrew Sparks right arm locked in and just yeah. use that use the pressure. Nothing to lose. No. And it, it like I said, it brought him brought him right back in this match. Shooting for a cradle. Sparks does a good job attacking the top hand. Ref starts counting because you can't stay down on that leg. Come up and he does just in time. Double boots. Sparks is wrestling like he might be shell-shocked a little bit. Got to be careful. Like, that absolutely yeah. can happen. And, and it's fighting off your back takes a lot of energy yeah. out of you very quickly. You're going for a tech fall and then get launched to your back. Another reversal for Andrew Sparks. 18 to 9 he leads now. Sparks has him flat, one leg in, a lot of pressure. Just not a very fun place to be no. for Ryan Bolatino. Good thing for Bolatino, he is not trying to throw a power half on the other side. Yeah, the scoring. It's crazy. I mean, just three-point takedown, four near fall. And you're right back in a match. Sparks trying to get that cross wrist roll. Use that same tilt he got earlier in the first period. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if... Getting a little... Like, Bolantino just staying flat. He's doing the right things, but you can't get called for stalling in Absolutely. that type of situation. Bolatino just took top. I love that. People don't choose top enough. I bet Patasco is telling them. Absolutely. Assistant coach Jake Patasco, very 
often took top when he was wrestling. And and a locked hands, hands call. call. Ref's going to allow him to work through this position. Now, see if there's a chance, you know, they let him kind of wrestle through it. And we have a challenge. We got a challenge, yeah. Camels. Head coach Scott Sentes disagrees that there was a locked hands call. Officials will come over. Take a look at it. Yeah, work together. I mean, you get. Why not use yeah. your challenge? Get a look here. He has hands locked. We're still up. He's allowed to have his hands locked here. Leg comes in. His knee goes down. I guess we don't really have yeah, a good. Not an angle from there to see if it was still locked. We are extremely close to where the officials are reviewing this. And try not to speak super loudly. Yeah. But I feel like the ref had a good view of it because he caught it right away. And yeah, we have Patasco is He's talking about what, what to do in top. Yeah. That was that and orange suit, too, he talked about earlier. It is. Bolatino should listen. You, you have to listen to a man wearing that suit. <laughs> or not. <laughs> Shout out to the officials, too. We're getting a chance to see it. They're doing a great job yeah. today. It's a rare compliment that I would give to assistant official Kurt Frost. I don't often like to compliment that guy. Sparks starting the season off five and one. Uh, two and oh in duels. Again, this is uh, his senior year. He's been a part of the Minnesota Gophers for some time and freshman year we gave him the nickname or not the nickname but he was a part of the high pace boys so the, the call on the mat is confirmed they were able to review that and see that his hands were in fact locked when andrew's knee hit the mat so one point on the penalty point makes it 19 to 9 now for sparks Sparks up to his feet right away, but Valentino, good mat return. And Sparks looking for a leg slip. Valentino's got the body figure forward there. That's, yeah. Andrew up to his feet. Going to a, a Merkel or a side headlock. I love, I want yeah. to applaud the effort out of Ryan Bolatina. He is a home run hitter. Swung and missed on that one, but I, I like the effort. In check. Yeah. Keep he's, honest. He's trying. That might have been Andrew Sparks' third reversal of the match. He now leads 21 to 9. And he's working on rear fall. Holding four. So that would be a 25 to nine. And once he's still trying to work for the fall, but once Bolotino, if he if he's able to get off of his back, it will be a technical fall. Bolot Sparks trying to get that pin. Ref still holding it, saying the leg's still in. He's got to allow Botino back to center, and, and that will be it. Add the four points to the near fall, a 25 to nine technical fall for Andrew Sparks. Five more team points for the Gophers. They now lead in this duel 29 to zero after seven matches. We've got seven down, we've got three to go. Great match from Andrew Sparks there. You know, kind of like you said, getting a little bit of a shell shock in that lat drop. Early on, able to keep going. Angles and 
Just every every time, run into yeah. that side. The Gophers have done that really well all. And then there's Baltino's oh, no. lap, lap <laughs> And had, had Andrew Sparks in a yeah. world of trouble there. But Sparks able to defend it, able to get out. We've got seven matches down, three to go. We will be back shortly. Welcome back inside the Maturi Pavilion. We have seven matches down. We've got three to go. I'm Mack Ryder with Dan Williams at 174 pounds for Campbell Brant Craycraft out of Two Rivers, Wisconsin. For the Gophers, ranked number 25 in the country, Clayton Whiting, also from Wisconsin. Some Wisconsin on Wisconsin crime going on right here. Clayton Whining is a transfer from Missouri. Yes. Dan, I like what Clayton's doing. Is that, are those socks pulled over his shoes to protect the laces? That's a cool look if that's yeah. what it is. Take your socks, roll them over the top oh. of your shoes. Pulled over. I love that. Craycraft in on a shot, but Whiting does a good job. He knew where he was on the mat and just a little bit of pressure brought him out. Strong start. hips. Craig Kraft using that right hand to kind of keep some distance. You talked a little bit about it in Gable's match, but measuring that, yeah. that distance. Whiting in on a low, or a, a long, fast shot. Cut up, cut up. Craycraft was a state champ in high school in Wisconsin. Whiting able to finish that takedown. Three points for the lead, 3-0. Craycraft up and out right away. Whiting, a four-time state champ in high school in Wisconsin. I wonder if they wrestled each other at all. I'm sure they have. Whiting trying to stay very, very heavy on that front head. Trying to pull Craycraft down. Five seconds left in the first. Whiting switching up his grip on the front head. But Craycraft doing a good job controlling elbows. Another long extended shot from Clayton Whiting Short trying time. to finish. Is he going to another takedown right at the end of a period? I, they had to have had a, made that a point in practice this week because yeah. we're seeing it all the way through the lineup. Every guy is finishing. Now, do you think this is something that Agum is bringing to the table, or is this like Kimmer? I think it's new guy. Yeah, new guy Michael goes, Kimmer. Hey, we should try to score more at the end of a period. You guys ever thought about this? <laughs> what if we just score more points? Love it. Great strategy. Craycraft starts down in the second period. Whiting trying to go far knee, far ankle. Quite a bounce here, go back to the center. Six to one lead right now for Clayton Whiting. I like to see Whiting the rides on the right side, the good side. 
Not a lot of people do that. I like that. Yeah. Waiting, doing a good job too. Keeping that left arm down. With if he's left leg lead, keep that left arm down, not to kind of you know protect himself, not getting yeah. extended. <laughs> Trying to finish the shot, still nothing. And there's gonna be a takedown for Clayton Whiting. Nine to two lead now. And Craycraft is trying to fight for, trying to scoot his hips down yeah. and away. Waiting, trying to keep him up into that crab ride position. Good follow on top. And Craycraft up to his feet. 30 seconds left in the second period. Whiting up nine to three. All right. Let's see if, if Whiting is gonna attempt another takedown here at the at the end of the period. In on a leg, trying to finish quickly. <laughs> it's secured. All right, good defense by Craycraft. Yeah. Clayton will choose down to start the third period. He leads nine to three, has 104 riding time. Hard switch off yeah. the whistle. Good follow by Craycraft. Now he's putting a lot of weight on Whiting's hands. Scooping that near leg. Clayton trying to sit back in him. He's got that leg kind of trapped. Trying to sit back into him and finish this. Craycraft doing a good job keeping that wrist control so he can't sneak his inside elbow through. But and that's gonna be a reversal for Clayton Whiting. Another two points, 11 to three he leads now. Working on trying to build that riding time. Whiting gonna cut Craycraft loose. Whiting needs a takedown to get a major. Whiting does a good job circling back in and shooting Craycraft off the mat. Ref is saying continue in motion, so no stall, no stall warning needed. There, Whiting back in on a leg attack. Trying to find that corner. Has his elbow down to the mat, trying to block his leg so Craycraft can't square up with him. There he's got one leg behind, trying to get two legs behind, shelf that leg of Craycraft. He's at that's gonna get the finish. Another takedown, 14 to four, he leads. 20 seconds left in the match. Coach Agum telling Whiting, pressure forward, 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 keep, keep pressure on the hands, keep weight on the hands. And that's the In way the it's going to end. Top. Another bonus point win for the Gophers. Add the point for riding time. A 15 to 4 major decision for the Gophers. Gives them three more team points. They lead now 33 to 0 in this duel through eight matches. Great job by Clayton Whiting there. Head coach Brandon Agum in his ninth year now as the head coach at Minnesota. He's been involved with Minnesota's program for a very long time. Absolutely. Such a huge part of the modern Minnesota program. Moving on now to 184 pounds for Campbell will be Connor Maslinick out of Pelham, New Hampshire. For the Gophers, ranked number 10 in the country, Max McAnelli. McAnelli 
very exciting wrestler, very talented, hardworking, um, and we get, or the Gopher fans get four more years with him, get four years with him. And he uh, submitted his application to be another high pace boys. And so far, he's on probation. Yep, we're thinking about admitting. Right away, in on a shot. Max is a very, very high volume attacker. Always looking to score. Extremely good wrestler on his feet. Wrestling Connor Maslonik. 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 I thought I had that one. You'll get it. Max back in on another leg attack. Again, Max is a guy that I think will benefit a ton throughout his career from the, the, the rule change last year to the three-point takedowns. Very good job. I mean, that was a straight single. But then as soon as he got his hands locked, cut, cut the corner, got an angle on it, easy takedown. Maslinick was a three-time New Hampshire state champ. Kind of like a New England guy, huh? Yeah. Another great takedown from Max McAnally. Cuts Maslinick loose. Back in on a shot. Crouch that finishing to a double. I can see him firing right back down. Getting a little separation. Good defense here. Max leads nine to three. Great footwork. That just, Maslinik just not, yeah. not biting on those fakes and that, that right leg lead is just too heavy. Another takedown for McAnally. Checks the clock. seconds left. Yeah, checks the clock, sees he's got 27. He's still getting another one. Try and get, his, get at least one more. Yeah, another takedown from Max. It's 15 to four now. Gonna Finish this period, trying that top position. Such a good job moving his hands, moving his feet together, getting the angles, and his timing. Absolutely, and, and, and Maslinik, he ha if he starts to bite on those fakes and he, he reacts to them, then Max will snap down, run corner. If he doesn't bite on that fake, then he's just running through on those shots. Just see, there's a couple in, out, in, out, back in. Easy right snap, run corner. Max up to his feet and out for the escape. 16 to four, now he leads. Back in on another shot. If he can finish this one, it will be a tech fall, and he does. That's takedown and 19 to four technical fall for Max McAnally early on here in the second period. He's good. He's very good. Uh, five. He's a high pace boy. He's in. Granted. You're giving it Granted. to him? Granted. All right. He's in. Five T points for the Gophers makes this a 38 to 0 lead for Minnesota after nine matches. We've got one more match to go. 197 pounds. Returning All American for the Gophers, Isaiah Salazar. Ranked number seven in the country, Isaiah Salazar. And I believe it looks like we will be getting a forfeit from Campbell at uh, 197 pounds. That wrestler is unable to go. So a forfeit for Isaiah Salazar. Six more team points for the Gophers. is going to give them a 44-0 win on this Sunday here in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Great job by Minnesota up and down the lineup. We talked a lot about it. Almost every single match, finishing periods yep. on top, getting takedowns late in the mat periods. An absolutely electric day. Started at, 100, at heavyweight with Gable's return. 
Phenomenal job by that Gophers And team. I like how Minnesota is trying to get their best lineup out there for the fans. At, at a home duel, people are healthy. Let's get them out here for the fans. Good Great job, crowd Minnesota. today, too. Absolutely. There he is. The, the big man is back. It was good hearing uh, Notorious B.I.G. again. Yes. Quick takedown over a returning All-American. Yeah, Tate. Okay, Gadi Ali was is a phenomenal wrestling another table. Just solid mat return from, I believe that was Cooper Flynn, yes. Drew Robertson. You can always tell Drew by the knee pad. Yeah. Andrew Sparks. See, I wonder how many of these quick go behinds we had as a team. Up and down the line, yes. Finding, those, and finding that's, those angles. That lat drop was great. Great job by, you know, Campbell traveling in. They, they're, good job by those guys trying to find a, a, a tough schedule. Right. A lot of times it's hard. They have to travel to, you know, they wrestled Nebraska earlier on this year. They've competed against Minnesota. They're finding those battles that will get them ready for the NCAA championships. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Mac Ryder with Dan Williams. This has been Golden Gopher Wrestling on BTN+. Plus. Army bro, and the Krishna are coming. Divi galu.